As a musician, I've always been most excited about improvising in a group, listening to your co-player, making eye contact, building on what they play, being constantly ready to change your plans, come up with new ideas on the fly. Here's a quick example. But I'm not only a musician, I'm also a roboticist and have long been fascinated by the concept of robotic improvisation. I've been interested in building robots that can improvise like no human can, that can make music that humans will never be able to make. Music that will surprise me as a co-player, music that will inspire me. So I set to build a set of robots that don't only create and play rich acoustic sound, but can also reason about music in a way that sounds expressive and creative, that can show musicianship. And I wanted them to be also social and expressive, using gestures and using movement like humans. So I built them in an anthropomorphic way, looking like humans. But in order to be really creative robots, what we really need is for these musical ideas to be meaningful to us, maybe even go as far as beautiful. And this is a big challenge, and the way I decided to address this challenge is actually to build robots that listen like humans, but play and improvise like machine. If my robots could listen and understand and appreciate music the same way we humans do, they may be able to play music that we appreciate as meaningful or beautiful. But we also want to push them to making music that humans will never be able to create, which is where the machine part comes in. And the first step uh, toward listening like a human goal, for us was beat detection. Using autocorrelation and similarity algorithms, we programmed this robot, Shimon, to bob its head to the music that it listens to. My group at Georgia Tech Center for Music Technology actually put also a camera in the robot head so it actually can also look at the bobbing human head and synchronize to the beat. Just checking out. Thank you. We developed many other modules like that, that the robot can understand melody and harmony and timbre, which is a color of sound and rhythm. But I wanted to show you a couple of examples where it actually plays like a machine. We wanted to have algorithms that only machines can run that have shown interesting results in other domains, aesthetic results, such as cellular automata or fractals, or in this case, genetic algorithms. So here the robot, Hailey, is embedded with a large database of musical phrases. And when it listens to humans, it actually evolves these phrases to sound more like the humans. It uses mutations and crossbreeding between these motifs, just like in genetic uh, evolution. And the response and the product sounds like a combination of machine-generated music and human touches. Another example is style morphing. We analyzed a lot of improvisations by humans, by great humans, musicians, such as Thelonious Monk and Joel Coltrane, and we used Markov chains, which is a statistical method to compute the probabilities of different pitches and different rhythms in each one of these styles. And then the human can actually send a motif, a little seed, and start to morph between these styles of these great musicians, creating hybrid styles that could have not created otherwise. <laughs> So, after getting these preliminary results, which were kind of encouraging, I actually decided to take a break and write a science fiction novel around the concept of robotic creativity. And I didn't really get to finish this uh, novel, but it did let me think about embedding robotic creativity in humans, 
using the ideas from robotic musicianship to make us inspired from the inside, from our own body, instead of just being surprised by independent robots from the outside. Make us creative cyborgs or transhumans. And just about this time, I actually was contacted by uh, Jason Barnes, who is a drummer who actually lost his arm three years ago in an accident, and it kept him pretty devastated because music was his life. And he saw some of our technology and emailed me whether we can use our technology to build him a prosthetic, a robotic prosthetic arm. And what he wanted is to use muscle he still has to control the grip of the stick, because it didn't have the palm of the fingers. And, of course, I never done anything like that, so I emailed him and said, sure, we can do that, <laughs> just like any improviser would say. And here's Jason, eight months later, trying it for the first time. Next. But as you know, I'm very interested in robotic improvisations and creativity, so I asked Jason whether we can have another stick, a stick with a mind of its own, a stick that will improvise, that will take signals from its body and from the music, and hopefully will make him creative and push him to uncharted domain. And he said yes, he was a good sport about it. And in the next clip, you'll see Jason playing with a double stick arm, not only improvising, but improvising with speeds and complexities that are humanly impossible. And I think he just became the envy of every metal drummer out there, didn't he? I think one of the most interesting applications actually circles back to how it all started. The interpersonal connection between improvising musicians. But now we are in a completely different world because Andrew, the guitar player, can actually control the arm that Jason is playing. It doesn't only listen and improvise, but actually create a unique physical connection as they both synchronize together, creating the product, uh, and you can see how they look at each other and try to figure out how it works. So all of these are just the first examples to reaching a world where we are actually being inspired by, and maybe emotionally touched by robotic creativity. My next towards this challenge is actually to look at the human brain and try to get more insights about creativity and musicianship uh, by looking at EEG signals. Other researchers are looking at it from different directions, and I'm really looking for the day where one of us will be able to build a robot that will create this kind of music that actually sends shivers down our spine, or, or makes us ecstatic, or makes us cry, or just blow our mind intellectually. And when this day comes, I guess I have enough material to go back and finish this novel of mine. Thank you very much.